I'm Sherry Heapis, and I'm the Associate Pastor at Andrew Chapel United Methodist Church. Welcome to Encounter. In this season, we're going to come to the table where everyone is welcome. We hope that this is a wonderful time for you to connect with God and worship anywhere where that we get to invite Christ to your table. Hear this week's scripture reading from the book of Luke. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening up the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Very often when we are sitting at table and sharing a meal and good conversation with another person, that's where you can really get to know someone. I'd like to say that I know my brother David very well. Yet a few months ago, we got together at a diner for lunch, and as we shared a meal at table together, my eyes were opened to a wonderful and new revelation about him. David has always been a man of faith, but he shared with me that day his newfound faith in Christ. He talked about what I like to call a heartwarming experience and which he knows Jesus Christ personally as his true Lord and Savior. And he said that it was as if one night Jesus had reached out and broke the chains that bound him from all the many challenges in his life, and it freed him to live life anew in the abundant love and mercy of God, which is available to all of us. David would tell you that he has a renewed sense of hope, and it shows on his face and in everything he does. He told me that day that he had no idea where this newfound faith in Christ would lead him, yet it compelled him to share his story and the love of Jesus with anyone who will listen. What hope and joy this brings to all of us in my family. My brother is not afraid to share what a difference the Lord has made in his life. And believe me, it's making a difference in the lives of my family and many, many others who know him. I loved listening to my brother's story there at the table that day. A table is one of the most important places for human connection. At table, when we share with others and listen and learn about them in deep and meaningful ways, I believe it's then that we are most fully alive to life. And I'm convinced that our dining tables have the potential to be the most missional places in all of our lives. Table fellowship is vital for shaping and sustaining our life with God for the world. And we need to make it a point to share our tables with people. For in sharing at the table, we can offer hope to those in need. We can see others as the children of God. And we may be happily surprised about what we learn about others right there at the table. We shouldn't be surprised then to find that throughout the Bible, God has a way of showing up at tables. In fact, it's worth noting 
that at the center of the spiritual lives of God's people in both the Old and New Testaments, we find a table. The table of Passover and the table of communion. Jesus shared himself at the table in the upper room on the night before meeting his death. And he also shared himself at table in the text that you just heard with the two travelers on the road to Emmaus. Now I want to give a little context to what was happening just prior to the scripture that you heard. The two travelers were heading away from Jerusalem soon after Jesus' crucifixion. And as they walked along, their heads, they were downcast as they kicked rocks along the dusty road, feeling defeated and disappointed and void of any hope. But as they walked along, a stranger joined them. The stranger, who was Jesus, asked them what they had been discussing as they walked along the road. And they stopped dead in their tracks, looked at each other, and then asked him if he was the only person who didn't know what had been going on for the last few days there in Jerusalem. And the stranger asked them, well, then what things were they talking about? They replied that they were talking about Jesus of Nazareth, a mighty prophet, and how he had been put to death. And then they said something amazing, but we had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped. What a note of tragedy in those words. Far too often this is the case for many people. And especially today because we walk with our heads down, kicking up dust and rocks along the road of life with hopes dashed, saying this, but we had hoped. How true it is. I wonder, when we got out of bed this morning, did we consider any hope in Jesus today? Or are we just going through the motions of another humdrum day? I sometimes think when it comes to matters of faith, we are guilty of small and self-centered hopes. And we don't expect Jesus to surprise us with bigger and more fulfilling hopes. Perhaps our hopes and expectations about the life of faith are just too small. The two travelers on the road to Emmaus had small hopes for Jesus. Even after they walked with Jesus and listened to him explain the scriptures as they walked along, they still couldn't see past their own expectations. And the stranger, who was still unknown to them at that point, sighs because of their tiny hopes. It's not until they arrive at their home and offer the stranger their hospitality that our two travelers experience a change. As the stranger takes blesses and breaks bread and gives the bread to them, it is then that their hopes are finally reframed by the resurrected Christ. And it's here that these two travelers' hopes have their own kind of resurrection. It's here that the resurrected Christ takes what they thought were broken promises and offers them a new way of imagining God's work on earth. And then, as the resurrected Christ disappears from their sight, the words of the good news of the resurrection of Jesus now come to life. Now they see that God is capable of doing much more than they had ever dared to hope or imagine. The resurrection of Jesus transforms their hopes and transforms their world. Right there at the table, the bread taken into Jesus' hands revealed to them the fullness of Christ that they had not yet seen. The bread, blessed, showed them God's purposes, the larger purposes for Jesus, 
a savior for the entire world. The bread broken opened to them the purposes of their own lives, to run and take that message and share it with others. The bread that was given to them exposed them to the generosity of God, a God who came to grant healing and wholeness and hope over and over again to all people. Our everyday experiences, the hardships that we face, the disappointments that we face, the failures that we experience, the broken promises, all those can shrink our hopes of what God, through Jesus, can do and is doing. And we may have even lost all sense of hope, yet it's at the table at the table where we eat that same bread, where God continues to transform our imaginations, just as God did among those two travelers. The table of the resurrected Lord calls us back to hope. Hope that Christ can warm your heart and offer you a newfound relationship in Christ. Hope that can Heal the wounds of this world. Hope that the sting of pain and death will ultimately be removed. Hope that the wrongs and injustices can be made right. That deep divisions among us can become bound and brought back together once again, here and now. You know, it was sitting at table there with my brother that day as we broke bread together that I heard about this hope being restored. The challenges of my brother's past were no more. And now the hope he has in Jesus lingers on his lips and ignites him to live out the good news with anyone who will listen. And you know, that day he not only shared the story of new hope he had with me, but he also shared it with the waitress who served us that day. She recognized that we had been in a deep and engaging conversation, and she wondered what we might be talking about. And it was my brother David who offered the gift of hospitality to her by taking time to listen to her and the many challenges that she has as a single mom. And he affirmed her as a child of God. And I have no doubt that she was changed by the experience. At table, in the bread and cup, Christ is revealed to us once again. And we walk away from that table changed with the hope of Jesus lingering on our lips and igniting us to live out the good news as followers of Jesus Christ. May Christ meet us on our journey, wherever we may be. And may any of the small hopes that exist among us be reframed and transformed into the good news of the resurrected Christ. Good news for us in a world of broken promises. Amen. Before I offer the prayer, we want to encourage you, if you have a prayer request or need, that you can go to our website, andrewchapelumc.org backslash prayer, and offer a prayer, and we will be in prayer for you. Let us go to God in prayer. Wondrous, gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we have shared together but especially, Lord, as we heard the hope that is within this wonderful story from Emmaus, where you walked alongside the disciples just as you walked beside us, opening the scriptures to us, opening your heart to us. May our hearts, O oh God, be warmed and on fire for you. And as you, Lord, come around the table to break bread, Help us to recognize you and be astonished and surprised 
and filled with hope, the hope of glory, that you are with us always. We thank you, Lord. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the
Sing like never before Oh my soul I'll worship your holy name I'll worship your holy name God, I'll worship your holy name 